The following editorial is the opinion of Ed the Sock and does not necessarily reflect the opinions of much music. Hey, television has the ability to be the greatest teaching tool ever created. If used properly, TV's immediacy and capacity to reach millions at a time presents an unparalleled opportunity to educate, illuminate, and bring the world together with shared experiences. If used properly. If used improperly, it's a devastating tool for indoctrination, manipulation, and sedation. Guess which one wins out? Well, PBS goes begging while Monica Lewinsky hosts a dating show. You tell me. As Edward R. Murrow said, television in the main is being used to distract, delude, amuse, and insulate us. It isn't that TV isn't being used to educate, but it's what we're learning that's suspect. Think of what TV has taught us. On TV, white people are always heroes, ethnics are amusing comic relief, and dark-skinned people are criminals. Girls with brains are homely, girls with boobs are stupid. Women who look like broomsticks are healthy, women of proportional weight are fat. Wars are another form of reality TV, its victims merely people voted off the show. Starving people are props for Sally Struthers. And what we learn about foreign lands is based on where the next survivor is set. Though things like Survivor Africa conveniently avoid the reality that all of Africa is Survivor Africa. And from birth, we are so inundated with these messages that we no longer even question how the world has been framed for us. Even dissent is manufactured for our consumption. All our values are as processed and marketed as a pop band. There's a reason shows on TV are called programming. And in effect, all programming is reality programming. It doesn't reflect the reality, it creates it. The bottom line, TV numbs our sensitivity, curiosity, and initiative. It's video Prozac, and we're a culture of pill poppers. That's why I like to do something different. From exposing the music industry on my much shows to challenging the sexual attitudes on my late night show, I try to do something that makes you go, huh? Every time I get angry emails about an editorial, I feel proud. Not because I made you mad, but because I made you feel. I made you think. I think TV should engage the viewer, not sedate them. And that's why I'm ending the Wham Bam. I started this show in the pop era when music went from emotions set to melodies to a focus group consumer product sold through mindless hype. Pop was making money hand over fist and everyone wanted to cash in, including this station, which bent over like a Jones and crack whore to help maintain the gravy train. Britney Spears' new video, every hour on the hour. With apologies to Susan Powder, I wanted to stop the insanity, to say the emperor had no clothes, or in Britney's case, very few. And I did, and you joined me. And together we resisted the lure of the low riders and raised our voices against the sugar-coated frosting of music. But then something happened. Nothing. Not much changed. Sure, pop bands broke up, but then they became pop solo acts. And after a while, even revolutionaries become part of the establishment. And as much morphed into a channel of video countdowns and best ofs, my show was forced to take whatever was left over. So we played a lot of crap. And even though they called it my show, I was only in it maybe 25% of the time. I felt bad asking you to watch two hours of TV to see me for maybe 30 minutes, squeeze into little bite-sized throws shorter than the commercial breaks. I became the condiments in a corporate sandwich, squeezed between thick slices of commercials and videos as processed as lunch meat. My voice was subsumed by other business, and yet the show had my name on it. It was dishonest. And if there's one thing you can say about me, it's that I've never lied to you. No, I need to get out of the happy, shiny tar pit and reclaim my voice. And the only way to do that is to put the wham-bam away. But that doesn't mean I'm abandoning you. Far from it. Contracts willing, I'll have a new show in July. 60 minutes long, 60 minutes of content. Well, 40 minutes without, with the commercials. No crappy videos I'm forced to play, no losing time for poppy gossip dressed up as news, no being forced to abridge my comments so we can throw to the new one from Shakira. Not fromage, but flavored like it, and with a greater role for the audience. And before I bring down the curtain, I have this to say about the station that's broadcast me all these years. Much as I criticize much, and much as much deserves it, it also deserves credit for being the only Canadian TV station with balls enough to let me go on the air and bite the hand that feeds me and the hand that feeds them. Without screening me, limiting me, or censoring me. I think it shows courage and respect for me, and more importantly, my audience. Or it could be that they're home eating dinner when my show's on, so they have no idea what I'm saying. Take your pick. The Ed Bulletin board on the Much site will continue, editorials will run every week, and hey, you may see me popping up here and there between now and July, just to let you know I'm still alive. But the Wham Bam is coming to a close. Shed no tears. Remember, they say all good things must come to an end. Much on demand will run forever. I'm Ed the Sock. <laughs>